This week I framed a few paintings by the artist Elwood Howell. Elwood's a good friend of mine. He lives and works out in East Hampton. And you can see that reflected in his paintings. He's known for painting landscape paintings with a very high horizon line that also have a very abstract quality to them. And Elwood paints on canvas, but he also paints on paper. It's a very heavy paper that he primes on both sides. And about 10 years ago, I was working with Elwood to come up with a way to show his work without putting it behind glass. And what we came up with is mounting the artwork on a braced panel and then floating the artwork in a frame to protect the deckled edge. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's go downstairs and get to work. I'll get started by cutting quarter inch plywood to size and I'm cutting the plywood about three quarters of an inch smaller than the artwork. Next I'll rip one inch strips of poplar and this is what I'll use for bracing on the back of the panels. I wanted to point out that when I'm building a braced panel like this, I use the molding that I'm building the panel with as a prop or a shim to hold the quarter inch plywood nice and level. And then as I work my way around the panel, attaching the molding, what the first piece of molding I basically hold upside down on the panel, make a mark, and that's my first cut. And then as I work my way around, I'll hold the long point of the miter at the long point of the piece of molding that I just attached come over to the opposite side, mark a line, and then I always just draw a little indication line that tells me which way I want to cut when I get to the miter saw. Okay, well now I'm up in the studio and I'm getting ready to mount the artwork. And I'm gonna take a measurement first so I can go downstairs and work on the frames while the glue from the mounting process is drying. And with a painting like this, I like about a quarter of an inch reveal between the edge of the artwork and the edge of the frame. So basically you, you're making the frame with a half of an inch larger opening than what the artwork is. For instance, if the artwork measures 22 by 22 inches, you would make the opening of the frame 22 and a half by 22 and a half. This is tight bond to wood glue and I'm spreading it evenly across the surface. I'm adding a little more wood glue to the edge of the artwork and you can see that it's face down on a sheet of plastic. Next I'll place the panel on top of the artwork and then I'll use a piece of three quarter inch MDF to help distribute the weight. Okay, well now I'm back down in the shop and I've already milled the material to half inch by two inches. And first I'll cut the molding to size and then I'll build the frames using a little wood glue and inch long nails in the pin nailer. Well, now that I've finished building the outside of all the frames, I'm going to build the inside of the frames and I'll get started by ripping strips of half inch plywood at an inch and a half.
I've cut a piece of scrap wood at an inch and five sixteenths and I'm using it as a gauge to make sure that I attach the inside of the frame at the right depth. I attach the molding with wood glue and inch and three quarter nails in the nail gun. I let the stain dry overnight and then I gave all the frames a thin coat of lacquer and next I'm going to gild the outside edge of the frame with aluminum leaf. I'll need to paint the edge with clay and I don't want to get any of the clay on the outside of the frame so I'll tape it off first with a little painter's tape. I painted the frame with three coats of clay sanding between each coat and I also sanded the last coat. What you're going for is a really smooth surface. The next step is the sizing. Paint the sizing on the clay and allow it to dry for about 15 minutes. The metal leaf comes in five and a half inch squares and I cut it into one inch strips when I'm working on frames like this. After removing the tape, I carefully sanded the inside and outside edge, then I brought the frame back downstairs to seal the aluminum with a thin coat of lacquer. Okay, well, we're back up in the studio and we're almost there. I know there's a, a lot of little steps with this project. But the next thing I'm going to do is paint the inside of the frame with flat black latex paint. I always like to have a damp paper towel with me when I'm painting the inside of the frame. And that way if I get any paint on the aluminum edge, I can simply wipe it off before it dries. I let the paint dry and now I'm going to mark out the inner frame so I can drill holes to attach the artwork to the frame. I'll attach the painting to the frame with inch and a quarter screws from behind. I think one of the most satisfying things about this project is putting the painting in the frame when it's all said and done. It's just, uh, it just kind of makes you feel good. Uh, I love the paintings and I love the way they look all framed up like this. Now I wanted to tell you about a couple of things before I finish up. One is, if you don't know, I auction off a small painting once a week on eBay. And if you want to check this out, there'll be a link in the description. This is a painting of the Navasink River. And also, I made a small film or a short film for Facebook. And the reason why I made it for Facebook and not YouTube is I used Pink Floyd, a song by Pink Floyd in the film. And it's just a film of my bees in slow motion, but it's pretty cool. It's almost like looking at a fish tank. And um, 
if you want to check that out, you'd have to check it out on my Facebook. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And also tell an artist about this channel because I think uh, the main thing that's made it possible for me to be successful as an artist is my training as a furniture maker. And that's what I'm trying to get across in this channel is the importance of knowing how to make something so you can take your idea from A to Z and sort of do everything yourself. And in this world where you can do that, whether you're recording music or writing a book, uh, it's really important to be able to do that. So if you know an artist, please tell them about my channel. I think that they'll find it very helpful. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.